what's up guys welcome back to the channel another week getting started here at the shop well actually it's after lunch now but we're going to be doing another billet elbow install from tick performance and uh, this time we're going to be doing it on another cid intake actually haven't even got this thing out of the box yet so i don't know which one it is it is the 5.0 so basically on all these cid intakes just because i've done several of them we're going to be milling this down until the threads disappear and that's about where it comes out right as far as the opening for the uh, billet elbow flange so we we'll get this thing uh, chucked up on the mill we're going to put our cutter head on there uh, we got some new teeth on that thing so hopefully it'll go through the aluminum a little bit better than the stuff we had on there and uh we'll start making some chips So that's pretty much it like i said on all these cid intakes your stopping point will be whenever your 
threaded holes disappear whenever you get to the bottom of them and clean it off slick that's about where you want to stop doesn't matter if you have the 4.5 the 5.0 the 4.0 whatever they're all going to be cut down to that which will leave it at about the same height regardless of which one you got so you can see that opens it up to about the widest point that's going to be your thinnest point right there we probably could have stopped a quarter inch sooner or something but wanted to come in here and get these corners opened up as much as i can i always go in here and weld these for some inside support so that's it we'll get it all vacuumed up and get it on the bench Everything's laid out on the bench. What I've got to do now is take the drum sander and knock that little knife edge off the corners and just slick it up real good. Make sure there's no burrs. And we'll be ready to start some welding. What I'm gonna do first though is get the base flange. This goes on the intake. You see I'm uh, working on putting some studs in here now. I'm gonna put four studs in there where I can clamp it down. And I probably will take the elbow and tack it all together and tack it all the way around this flange, which will make it super rigid and uh, help hold this flat. Because the problem is these studs are such an exact fit. If this flange warps any, you'll have a problem getting the top on and off. And sometimes even doing the best you can, It'll still get tight and I have to drill these holes like one size over just so I can easily, you know, drop it on and off because I don't like giving it to somebody and them having to use a screwdriver on this to get it off. So trying to avoid warpage is the main thing. And uh, I'll show you right here as far as putting these studs in. For those who have never put studs in, a little trick. to use uh, two nuts. Try to show you on camera. So I put a wrench on one, put another nut on top where I can get a socket on it. We'll start. So you want to tighten them against each other where it spins on the stud, it doesn't try to bottom out the nuts against the uh, middle portion of the stud. See, it's spinning the entire stud now. And then at that point, you can just ratchet it down. These you wanna screw all the way in until they stop. But if you don't, your uh, shank part of your stud or whatever the middle part, the technical word for it is, will be sticking out proud above the top of the uh, elbow flange and you won't be able to tighten the nut down all the way on it. So make sure you screw them all the way down until they don't spin no more. You should have something like that.
So the hardest part about this entire process for me is getting the throttle body flange flat because the shape of this elbow it kind of lays down it's kind of hard to get that thing in a spot where you can keep it pushed up against the elbow tack it on and still keep it flat so i usually just have to put one tack in the middle and then kind of mess with it with the level you've seen on the time lapse i held the level on the top like that while i tacked it on so as far as the order of assembling this thing, the way I did it in the time lapse is about the best way I have found to get everything welded together uh, really good and everything will look super clean. Main thing is uh, getting it on the bench where you can weld it comfortably and you see it'll, it'll stand up on the throttle body flange so if you go ahead and put that on you can rotate it around like that like a rotisserie if you've got a rotisserie fine i don't have one i just spin it on the bench but all that's welded up now i'm going to get it tacked to this flange and then i'm going to bolt it to this and then we're going to weld around the flange on the intake and then lastly get this welded up
and that's the finished product one thing I did do this time is I took the stud on the sander over there, the belt sander, and cut about an eighth inch off the fine thread portion of it that the nut goes on on the top. That helps you have room to get a wrench like this. And even I sanded it down as well, but you can get a wrench on it to tighten it like that. It's really tight in there. That's about the only way you can do it. So another elbow installed very 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 clean topper to a cast intake like i said these cids cut them no matter which one you get you're going to cut it down to where the uh the holes disappear you know on the original top flange and i will get a measuring tape because i know somebody's going to ask me on how tall this thing is with the elbow to the top of the throttle body flange, we've got about 13 inches. And overall, you're probably about 14 inches overall height on this thing. And this is the LS3 configuration. Weld it on the inside there. And that's it. It is hot in here. Feels like it's 150% humidity. If there was a such thing. But another one done. We're going to package it up and get it out the door. So thanks for watching.